Uh, I'm wondering if uh, you will let us in on who might start a net for you tomorrow. I will not. I'll let you guys know tomorrow morning. Um, I wanted to ask about the physicality overall. How much a part of the formula do you think consistent physicality from throughout your lineup is in the playoffs? If it's something you want to see from them, and are you getting enough of it? Well, if you look at the shot, or the shot, the um, hit totals after every game and seeing usually the team that has the most hits is usually the losing team because they are chasing the puck. You're the defending, um, so you often don't want to have more hits. But um, as a team collectively, when there's an opportunity hit, so not necessarily has to be a big bone crunching hit, but just having little rubs and little just slowing them down, defending them, just makes it a little frustrating for the opposition. And overall, you know, I think throughout the playoffs, maybe there's some games where we could have had a little bit more. But as a team collectively, I thought we've been doing pretty well at that. And maybe there's one or two guys that could give us a little more. But um, overall as a team, I want us to be checking with our legs and sticks. That's the most important. And then the third is playing the body. So I'll just follow up on that. You have players who will go two, three games without a registered hit, uh, sometimes four, five. And you're okay with that if you feel that the rest of the play is appropriate and, and that sort of thing? Well, it depends on the player and what they're providing. Or are they providing some offense? Are they providing energy? Is they uh, defensive plays? Ultimately, as a player, you got to be providing something. Is it offense, defense, physicality, an agitator? Everybody's got to be bringing something to the party. Chris, going back to Stu, um, he, this, he's got really good bounce back numbers. So does your team after after a disappointing game. Um, how much does that weigh into the decision for tomorrow? And also, it's the playoffs. I know you don't have a lot of time, but do you try and let a player work his way through maybe a little mini slump like this? Um, as for Stu, I think, um, yeah, he has bounced back very well. And throughout the season, there's been games where he hasn't played well, and we responded, and he's done well. And um, Playoffs last night uh, it was a game that I'm sure that we know that he can play better than that. And um, we've got, like I said, we've got two great goalies. Since I've been here, I've been very happy with the goalies that we've had. And the the level of play that they've given us, uh, I've been very fortunate to have. And, um, you know, we've got a decision to make who's going to be that next guy to go in. But, um, you know, if it's Stu, I have confidence that he will bounce back. If it's Picks, I know that he can play and give us a solid performance when he hasn't played for a, a long stretches of time. He's shown it throughout the regular season. So we've got a big decision to make. But I think either guy that we choose can get the job done. Chris, you said, Chris, you said a couple times over the last couple of days that you can't keep playing those top guys as much as you have. I just wonder how that changes. How do you make the change? And what are you looking for to get some of the lower end guys in the lineup a bit more ice time? Um, yeah, I guess looking at you know guys who can contribute more and who have been playing well. You know, I think of you know we're looking at secondary scoring and guys who playing with that edge and physicality and possibly put the puck in the nets. You know, I, you know, Dylan Holloway's played really well. You know, I liked how he's responded throughout the playoffs. You know, there's numerous guys that we can go through the lineup and say, you know, they can be relied on a little bit more and um, giving them situations where they can succeed. You have Connor and Leon and, and Zach and, you know, a few of these guys that you're playing a lot, like, how does a coach re resist the temptation to do that? Because they're obviously tremendous players. It is. It is tough having that temptation. Hopefully the temptation is alleviated with um, a two or three goal lead. But, um, you know, the other night you've got uh, an offensive zone face-off with um, Drysaddle, McDavid, and Hyman sitting on the bench. It's pretty tough not to say you guys would go out for that face-off again. But... Uh, you know, we, we have other players that have shown that they can score. You know, Warren Fogle, 20 goals. Um, Evander Kane, 20 goals. You know, we've got a lot of guys that can help out and we'll, we'll need it. Maybe not for one game, but if we're going to have success throughout the playoffs, we're going to need some uh, more contributions.
Chris, how difficult is it for a coach to be behind the bench and try to find that one other line that's going good so you don't have to play the big guns? You keep moving people around. You hope that you find three guys that shift after shift can help out. Yeah, well, I think um, as a coach, you are trying to find something that works. But ultimately, it's if you're always moving things around so much, they can't feel confident and they can't communicate and they're not sure what each other's doing on the ice, um, that you have to let them play it out. And, you know, last night, you know, I think we're a little unfortunate with the goals, you know, four or five goal posts, a couple of pucks right behind the goalie. You know, if those go in, we're probably having a different conversation. If we have a, another save, we're probably having a different conversation. So as a coach, I have to be uh, careful not to overreact and making big changes when we just have to get a little bit better in one area. Chris, um, you've allowed 12 goals in the first three games. You haven't given up a lot of shots. Last night you mentioned needing more saves. Are you seeing anything else in your own zone that you feel your team needs to correct uh, heading into tomorrow's game? There's always plays there. We're out of position here. We had a turnover here, but um, you know, I think there's a lot of one-offs. I don't see there's a pattern on we're getting exposed here or um, we're not breaking the puck out. They're getting us in this situation. So, you know, overall, I don't think there's anything um, that needs to be addressed that's um, really serious. I guess a similar question for the penalty kill. You didn't allow a goal through the first six games of the playoffs. You've allowed three in the last two games here. Same same question. Are, are you seeing any sort of pattern or anything that's allowing Vancouver to have success on the power play? Uh, yeah, we, we did see something there that we have to address. Um, just a small little um, adjustment. And, you know, they've got five exceptionally um, talented players on their power play, on that first unit, and they are going to get some opportunities to score goals. Um, but, you know, I think there's some things that we can do to um, make it a little more difficult for them to do that. Chris, um, did, did Henrique have any sort of setback to miss game three? And uh, if not, do you think he's available for tomorrow? Uh, it's still day-to-day, -day and um, I'm not sure about setback or just maybe not quite as good as we thought it was going to be. I know during the game, you know, we we needed him to play. We wanted him to play. He felt comfortable playing. You know, as the game went on, you know, it's a little bit different playing the game where there's contact and uh, physicality opposed to going on the ice by yourself, doing some skating drills, and probably just wasn't quite ready. And like you said, possibly game four, maybe five. We'll see. Um, I don't think it's something that just happens. Um, I think it's um, – Full confidence the NHL is looking at that and it will address it appropriately. Chris, this question is from Cam. Just on the decision to not have all of the players on the ice today, um, you know, rest versus, you know, getting out there and working on some stuff. And if the way the game is played last night, maybe that helps inform your decision a bit too. Um, yeah, no, I think you always have to balance on um, going on the ice being productive, and then the rest. Rest is obviously very important. And we've got, you know, f five or six, seven guys that absolutely would not benefit at all going on the ice today. And now if you take those guys off, other guys going on the ice, you know, they touch the puck, and really you're not working on anything system-wise. So we'll have the players touch the ice and shoot the puck and pass it around a little bit tomorrow morning, and hopefully, we can address the things that we need to address through video or on the board. And, and another one for me, um, playing McDavid and Drysaddle together. Obviously, you know you're pushing those minutes up there. One way to maybe balance it a bit is to separate them. Are you are you leaning towards either either way to start tomorrow night together, 
or potentially apart if Dry Saddle's healthy enough to, to play that center position? Yeah, we talked about last game, the plan on, you know, Leon playing some games at center and some on left wing and the kind of got away from that plan just because we were chasing the game. We're down 3-1 and now we need offense. One of the best way to get offense is put those three together. And, you know, if we have the lead or it's a different situation, maybe we manage the lines a little bit different, but um, I haven't uh, decided exactly how we'll start tomorrow.